Hello everyone and now welcome to a game. This game is going to be, well, Lin vs. 120 WGL 2020 Winter Season Pro Division. As we look over here on the top right hand side of the map, Lin has spawned as the Blue Orc. Meanwhile, 120 spawning as the Teal Undead. Undead versus Orc in a 1v1 matchup with a lot on the line. Not your, well, as interesting as um, ladder maps, uh, ladder games are, and um, for, in for interesting strategies to really see what the meta it has become, you really want to see what are, is being played at the highest tournament levels. We are looking at, well, a pretty standard opening coming in from the undead so far. But, well, with the meta constantly being in flux, I can't actually predict what the hero of choice is going to be any longer. Death Knight, Crypt Lord, even a, occasionally a Dreadlord and a Lich has, has been first in these past couple of months, really opening up the strategies that we see in Warcraft 3. Death Knight, however, the more common hero, and it is going to be, nope, a Crypt Lord. Nope, a, De a Dread Lord. All right, I thought I saw a Crypt Lord for a second. So Dread Lord first, coming across from 120. Coming back on the other side, the Blade Master is going to be the hero of choice as well. We do see a Voodoo Lounge and a Barracks being placed down as well. And, well how much lumber do we need to grab in order to be able to get to tier before going into tier two that has been one of the closest things i want to watch with the well the playtest realm upping the great hall from 10 to 11 supply provided by the great hall as we're well looking at him not being able to train up anything right now all right going to be trying to get into 160 lumber and then make its way out acolyte going to quickly scout out there is a grunt out onto the battlefield voodoo lounge not nearly done but that's okay grunt is going to get ensnared here no not going to get ensnared interestingly enough not getting ensnared dreadlord opening up and it is going to go with sleep. Still curious what the new build orders will come out of the 11 food. Yeah, I am really curious as um, as they start experimenting with that. Um, Orc Burrows, um, someone had actually just recently asked me, hey, why does human get um, farms only provide six supply while their town hall provides um, 12? And well, that is a, a great way to diversify um, well, the different races. Being able to have a 12 on your uh, initial town hall is to try, kind of make up for the fact that your farms only provide six. You end up being supply blocked for a little bit if you only had um, if you only had 10 supply from your main town hall. Um, also, on top of that, it was also always very very important for the where the positioning of your farms were for a human player. So if you uh, position your farms in a rather um, strange location. Oh, is this is this act like going to get taken down? Blade Master. Oh, trying to get away. No, does not get away. Loses the Blade Master. Dust of Appearance was ready. And the Grunt is still going to get taken down. Beautiful play by 120. Knowing to use that Dust of Appearance in time. And trading essentially a Ghoul for a Grunt and a Blade Master. And that's most mostly for scouting purposes. Yeah, that was just really well played there. Also, he does not have to deal with a Blade Master harassing his haunted gold mine yet. He should be training this up to a Nerubian Tower. And as I, in mid sentence, he goes ahead and does it. All right, Forest Troll Berserker gonna get taken down here. The ghouls will now also have cannibalize um, right out of the gate. And I do find this as a very interesting strategy. Undead players, um, this will open up uh, play for undead as, well, the, the over-reliance on the Death Knight early on will actually will move away even further. If your ghouls themselves can heal up after creeping, well, how strong is that going to be? We may actually even see more Lich first play um, as you don't need to worry about the hit points on your ghouls nearly as much. All right. Coming back around, we are looking at the Dreadlord getting at sitting at level two. We also see that he has Vampiric Aura as his ability, as opposed to Carry On Swarm. Interesting strategy there, as we are going into Mass Ghouls and perhaps going to be picking up a Circlet of Nobility. Meanwhile, Blade Master 
uh, how is it actually putting pressure on this haunted gold mine i uh, would have thought there was enough time this grunt also needs to get attacked as well we are looking for um the the two sides to um, well, slow down the attack the grunt is, is he slow yeah oh 120 is in fact microing these two are we gonna see a cancellation no I think we did see a cancellation right there. The Blade Master was able to get enough as the Blade Master now coming back around. Are we going to get a sleep? Yes, we are. And now a possible surround dust of appearance as the dust of appearance that Blade Master is still trying to get away. It is going to get slept once more and going to take a little bit of damage again. Wait for it. Wait for it attack with the nerubian tower and um, to try and yeah it should have attacked with the new nerubian tower to wake it up that would have been worked out better and now the blade master is going to just be able to walk away nope constantly just getting sli slept and i guess the reasoning behind that is that well the blade master is going to be out of mana and not going to be able to escape there all right, interesting. What is going on in this matchup? Um, strange, strange games. This Dreadlord first really throwing things off as we see a hex. Or a, 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 are we going to see a possible surround onto the Shadow Hunter? Oh my gosh, that staff of teleportation on that Dreadlord going to ensure another kill. And a level three. Oh, a level three. Dreadlord has gotten three hero kills before the seven minute mark of this game. This is a, cr a complete and crazy loss right now. But right now, all of a sudden, 120 has to deal with Wind Riders. Wind Riders, very, very powerful um, in that, well, there's nothing really in the undead army that can currently attack them. Coming back around here, we are taking the tier two. We are trying to build that graveyard now, getting up some more ghouls and getting up a second crypt as well well to perhaps get some gargoyles um, going meanwhile this grunt running all the way back across over here will it be able to get some damage onto an acolyte yes it will wind riders are now making their way over skeletal minions also transitioning back over as well as we should be looking at perhaps a spirit tower join in on the fight wind riders are going to be more than enough to constantly harass without much issue as the dreadlord is sitting out with level two sleep right there that sleep had just long lasted long enough that level two sleep to really cause problems acolytes now looking to back away once more and well i i yeah dreadlord is going to be able to try and engage here we are looking at the acolyte trying to continue to make its way back here that acolyte down to about 56 hit points more damage added in this acolyte could get taken down down to 60 hit points though trying to get away and the nerubian tower oh final spear in the back getting that damage in all right uh, so so crazy here uh, well, let's well make our way back across is that acolyte gonna perhaps get taken down yes it will a necropolis is coming in across as well i think the what very fat lynn to go for the um all right still making their way back through getting into a little bit of damage however that spirit tower able to finish off that one one of the two wind riders meanwhile back off to the north blade master seeing that level two level Player one shadow hunter the wind riders causing problems and harassments on both sides as the crypt fiends are now out onto the battlefield and with two crypt fiends all of a sudden the wind riders are going to be shut down completely that web makes hit and run tactics completely moot as the necropolis is nearly done at the expansion coming back across here wind riders have a well, small small window of um, effectiveness in a game of warcraft 3 especially as we're going to be going into more and more crypt fiends we do see that the dreadlord is sitting at level three getting closer to level four are we going to be looking at a solo dreadlord and it looks like it could be that way as we are only at halls of the dead 36 supply compared to 38 blade master and shadow hunter could play a very fast game of catch up in terms of overall experience as there are two heroes compared to one and the wind riders do deal large amounts of um, of burst damage allowing him to pick off units the crypt fiends however with that web is going to be the key if you actually web down one or two of those wind riders and then are just able to poke them down easily that is going to be the problem all right in comes some damage crypt fiend right there are we going to see a sleep yes onto the shadow hunter once more shadow hunter perhaps going to be backing away coming back through blade master wants that wants that level three shadow hunter still while well, trailing behind just a little bit there's a couple of ensnares as the murlocs 
making their way through to try and share some of all that poison damage. Blade Master sitting at level 2 does get have critical strike finally. Should be able to get to level 3 here in just a moment. And all of a sudden, what was a level 3 versus 2 level 1 heroes is now a level 3 versus a level 3 and a level 2 hero. They're, well, flipping the script. Um, 120. It does have a slight supply advantage over Lin. He, meanwhile, Lin having a slight hero advantage over 120. Skeletal minions walk into well this location over here. Dreadlord did not get XP for that Shadow Hunter kill. Um, hmm. I. When you are hexed, you don't gain experience. I did. I, I could have sworn I've seen hexed units gain experience in the past. I'll have to. Someone will have to. Uh, yep. Xander Dorn says it's true. All right. Well, someone who who has much more experience with the cust uh, with the map editor, um, uh, I'd I'd have to believe. As we're looking at the Dreadlord going after the Renegade Wizard here. All right, Crypt Fiend. Well, trying to back away. There's a sleep onto that Blade Master. Renegade Wizard will get taken down. Um, let's see. The sleep should be coming to an end. Item gonna go ahead and get picked up. Damage gonna get start uh, getting absorbed by that Blade Master right there. No, another sleep onto the Blade Master as that Blade Master. Well. And just sleeping on the job. Meanwhile, back across over here, Shadow Hunter sitting at level three. Are we going to be looking at more of these units getting taken out? Oh, Murloc uh, getting poisoned as we're looking at more attacks coming back across here. A couple of more ensnares going down as well. Shadow Hunter can, not going to be able to get to level four as the Blade Master is still trying to harass here. Double Obsidian statues, Crypt Fiends, Ghouls now making their way back out. Pendant of Mana, Potion of Healing, big items there as the Blade Master going straight after that Crypt Fiend. Crypt Fiend gets taken down. Are we going to see more damage get added up onto that Crypt Fiend there? No Death Knight to try and keep these units alive as the Blade Master has to constantly second guess what to do. If you told me I was going to see an Undead versus Orc matchup without. Um, without a, a lich for frost armor, I would have called you crazy. But that's what we're looking at right now. A solo Dreadlord strategy coming across in this matchup here. Perhaps keeping his opponent off guard. Are we going to go into a tavern hero? All right, Blade Master going after that. Um, Necromancer, Necromancer down to 81 hit points as it is trying to go uh, survive and make its way back out onto the battlefield here. It is going to be a goblin tinker. Okay, so Goblin Tinker alongside a Dreadlord. I think a, a solo Dreadlord strategy would, would have been much more common than a Goblin Tinker following this up. All right, no web. No web finally being brought down into play here as we see Necromantress coming across. All right, Dreadlord. Are they going to be able to finish off some of those units? Goblin Tinker. There goes some rockets trying to stun away some of those units. Crypt Fiend's trying to back away. There goes a Hex onto a Necromancer. Hexing a Necromancer to well, shut down all of the summoning of those, um, of those skeletal minions. 53 supply compared to 57 wind riders and this battle just absolutely has no lines whatsoever as another web goes down obsidian statue trying to heal up all of these units skeletal mages are dealing quite a bit of damage as well as the well the, so many of these units are trying to back away goblin tinker dreadlord do not have the ability to attack air and um, otherwise oh are we going to be able to stun down yes one wind rider does get stunned down getting finished off by one of the rockets there goes another web onto a wind rider right there all right <clears throat> More damage getting added and only a single Crypt Fiend left. 55 supply compared to 48. Where is the undead supply? That is my major question now. As the Wind Rider could get taken down, no healing wave saves him at the last possible moment. Crypt Fiend's continuing to fight. More Necromancers showing up. We are seeing some skeletal minions join in on the battlefield. Goblin Tinker low on hit points trying to back away. It does have that clockwork speed, but still not enough to get away from that Blade Master. As we're looking at the Wind Riders now looking to back up again. Blade Master going after some of those skeletal mages. Just blade or what dreadlord trying to finish off some of these other units here um, as we're looking at the obsidian statues perhaps going to start taking a little bit of damage watchtower going to get taken down here as we're looking at the skeletal mages retreating back once more all right one watchtower down there is no expansion here so with, um, even though there were a couple of watchtowers, Lin never is getting the e economic advantage that he really needs. Just trying to shut down the expansion before it really starts. Obsidian Tentus, um trying to dance away, but one Crypt Fiend unable to dodge that final spear. 
50 over 70 supply little bit of healing getting underway we are getting up a third obsidian statue a goblin tinker more crypt fiends um, and also trying to get burrow for good measure as those units are just constantly while well, getting focused down a bit too much we are looking at Halls of the Dead not going into Tier 3. We are at Fortress now, coming in from Lin. And what Fortress um, abilities are we going to be looking at from the Orc Army? This is a rather strange, unorthodox game. Uh, Blademaster going to pick up Claws of Attack plus 6 here. Wind Riders are out onto the field. Are we perhaps going to be looking at a, a, a sudden transition into Gargoyles? May actually work out well, considering that while well, the Dreadlord has Vampiric Aura. With Vampiric Aura, um, well, those Gargoyles um, are actually healing up a... a significant amount of hit points per attack since they have some of the highest melee damage in the game um, too bad that their melee damage is only effective against well air units we're looking at watch a second watchtower getting built back up great hall pocket factory well pretty much building that up extra quick as we're going to be looking at the dreadlord now trying to make its way back over goblin tinker has a potion of healing and a potion of lesser invulnerability as well necromancer is now making their way out across double obsidian statue i thought there was a third one as more units are making their making their rounds through nope yeah, nope yep yeah, they're only um, two here as the crypt fiends are now making their way in all right a couple of webs coming across here blade master trying to go after that crypt fiend a couple of webs already going down are we going to see some pockets or some rockets going down in as well trying to stun up those units blade master still sleeping on the job low hit point necromancer trying to back away once more as the units are going to try and turn back around here have to play a little bit of a dangerous game blade master and we're going to try to dive on him finishing off some of those units there goes one crypt fiend as the blade master just does a quick run by thank you for the follow as we're looking at well the shadow hunter still trying to engage back again dreadlord going to try to get into that front line position two watchtowers however going to be quite a problem to deal with as the healing waves on the blade master is going to keep him alive obsidian statue still alive here raiders now joining in on the fight as well we could be looking at a couple of ensnares 59 supply compared to 53 120 having a slight supply advantage as we're going to look at well oh, hex is going to be in time yes it is not it is going to be in time to finish off that dreadlord as the blade master gets to level five and well 120 pretty much falling flat right at the very end right there not quite sure what to make of that particular strategy um still well rather odd indeed as well 120 um, gives the gg lin able to hold there not quite sure why we didn't see gargoyles um, and well even with three hero kills early on it was one uh, 120 who lost the game as lin came back with a vengeance thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you guys enjoyed it